What is going on guys? In today's video, I will show you the best greatsword and crossbow build in Throne of Liberty. So in this guide, I will give you a quick overview of the setup, then after that, I will explain what skills and upgrades should you focus on. Then as well, we'll see what is the best gear and how to get it for both the mid game and the full end game. And then finally, we will go over the weapon masteries, stats, your skill rotations, and even what guardians should you use. So we would be able to get the highest damage possible and much more. This setup is very unique, because by using Vital Force and Cold Warrior, we will increase our skill damage by a massive amount. Our main build's focus is on the Mortal Mark skill, because when it gets activated, we'll see huge damage numbers. Also, normally mana regen is a problem for most crossbow users, however, with passives like Victor's Morale, you'll never have to worry about it ever again. This great sword and crossbow playstyle allows you to play like a bruiser with access to both the melee and mid-range damage. We will stack very high amounts of heavy attack chance, hit, and skill damage boost while also having big HP and DPS numbers. If you're looking for the best and most versatile melee bruiser build, then here it is. So let's move over to the setup. For the choice of weapons, we're going with Greatsword and Crossbow. And first of all, we have our skills. So for defensive skill, we use Iron Point Parry, while for active skills, we get Da Vinci's Courage, Selfless Diffusion, Mortal Mark, Stunning Blow, Merciless Barrage, Quick Fire, Mother Nature's Protest, Ascending Slash, Guillotine Blade, Valiant Brawl, Weak Point Shot, and Death Blow. As you can see from the gameplay, I don't have all of the same skill icons on my bar. It is because the skill icons will change depending on our specialization setup. So our Mortal Mark will turn into Detonation Mark, then Merciless Barrage will turn into Wild Barrage, and finally Valiant Brawl will turn into Cruel Smite. Then for passives, we want to go with Robust Constitution, Vital Force, Cold Warrior, Victor's Morale, Nature's Power, Piercing Strike, Bloodlust, and Ambidexterity. As for skill upgrade priority, for active skills, we want to mainly focus on Quickfire, Valiant Brawl, Mother Nature's Protest, Merciless Barrage, Selfless Diffusion, Mortal Mark, and Stunning Blow. While for passive skills, we focus on Robust Constitution, Piercing Strike, Vital Force, Cold Warrior, Nature's Power, and Victor's Morale. And then for the rest of your skills, they're not as important, so just upgrade them as you progress through the game. Also remember to always upgrade all of your skills to blue first, before moving on to purple. Next we have skill specialization, and for Da Vinci's Courage, don't select anything. Then for Mortal Mark, get Detonation Mark. For Merciless Barrage, get Annihilation Barrage Shot and Gale. For Mother Nature's Protest, get Lightning Arrow. Then for Guillotine Blade, get all three, so Charges Damage, Cooldown Reduction, and AoE Damage. Next we have Weak Point Shot, and for this we select Cooldown. Then for Selfless Diffusion, get Aggression. For Stunning Blow, get Cooldown Reduction and Damage Increase. For Quick Fire, get Minimum Chain Fire and Cooldown. For Ascending Slash, get Damage Increase and Cooldown Reduction. Then for Valiant Brawl, get Cruel Smite and Damage Increase. And finally for Death Blow, get Cooldown Reduction. Next we have Weapon Mastery, and this is how it should look like for the Crossbow. So take a look at the middle and get everything from Mystical Regen until Cold Vision and then go to the bottom and get that entire row. And then again, this is how it should look like for the Greatsword. So pretty much the same thing. At the start, get everything in the middle starting with Skilled Vitality until Complete Stun. And then go to the bottom and get the entire row. Next, let's take a look at our gear. And all of these items you can easily farm yourself. Which means that I specifically found items that only require you to grind specific spots and not use Auction House or go to Field Bosses if you don't want to. Also, if you're looking for leveling or farming gear setup, then I recommend for you to watch my leveling guides which are already up on the channel. So first off, we're using Rex Kimuro's crossbow, with traits like heavy attack chance, critical hit chance, and added attack speed. All gear should be at its max level, and you can get this item's crafting recipe from the Temple of Slaughter. Next we have Duke Magnus Fury Warblade, with hit chance, heavy attack chance, and critical hit chance. You can get it from Butcher's Canyon. Next we have Visor of the Resistance, with max health, melee evasion, and ranged endurance. You can get it from the Precious Blessing Pouch or by defeating NPCs such as Sandworm or Arc Brawler. 
Next we have Supreme Devotion with Mana Regen, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. You can get it from Cave of Destruction. Next we have Shadow Harvester Tunic with Magic Evasion, Range Division, and Buff Duration. You can get it from the Purple Armor Chests or by defeating the Avalos Tracker. As we're using two pieces of the death set, so we will get 14% critical damage bonus. Next we have Shadow Harvester Grips with Max Mana, Mana Regen, and Magic Evasion. You can get it from Temple of Slaughter. Next we have Breaches of the Executioner with Magic Evasion, Range Division, and Debuff Duration. You can get it from Precious Equipment Chest or by defeating the Abyssal Spectre. Next we have Soul Mirror Boots with Movement Speed, Magic Endurance, and Ranged Endurance. You can get it from Cursed Wasteland. Next up we have Collar of Decimation with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. You can get it by defeating Koazan. Next we have Braces of the Primal King with Max Health, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. You can get it from Purple Armor Chests or from the Cave of Destruction. Next we have Violent Signet with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. You can get it from the Cursed Wasteland. Next we have Amber Dimensional Band with Max Health, Skill Damage Boost, and Buff Duration. You can only get it from Purple Armor Chests. And finally we have Belt of the Midnight Hunt with Weaken Resistance, Skill Damage Resistance, and Debuff Duration. Last but not least, if at this current moment you only have blue gear, then don't worry because that gear doesn't really matter and you'll soon enough start changing it for the purple pieces. The setup I showed is the best current gear that anyone can farm, but no matter what gear you choose, this build will still work fine. But this setup is just an example of what a good items with good traits will look like. Next up, let's take a look at our gear upgrades. This game doesn't have a very typical gear progression. So by this I mean that you will have to upgrade pretty much anything you get. So we go from grey to green to blue and finally purple. No matter at which stage of progression you're watching this video, just keep upgrading your equipment to their max level. And then when you get better gear just transfer the experience from the old one to the new one. As for my gear recommendations, when you reach level 50 just farm accessible gear by doing open world dungeons. Also you want to extract traits from gear for Lucent. On top of that, you'll need to turn important purple gear acquired from co-op dungeons into lithographs and then sell them on the auction house. Last but not least, for your traits just prioritize the ones that give you the highest damage. And don't forget that you can acquire new traits by using the trait unlock stone. Next up we have the stats and depending on your gear you should adjust them accordingly. The goal for your endgame build is to reach 30 strength, 70 dexterity and 30 perception. For PvE, you care mainly about maximum damage, so putting points into dexterity and strength is our main important goal. Some players also prefer more to go with more strength. But the way I see it is that if you think that you don't have enough defense, then you can go with more strength. But if you're like me and want to do huge damage numbers and have maximum amount of DPS, then prioritize dexterity over strength. Next we have our guardian choice and this creature is a special transformation that can add offensive or defensive buffs to your characters for 30 seconds. And for our build, the best option is the Shade Revenant's Thino. This guardian launches projectiles every second that can crit and heavy attack. This is the best guardian for dealing damage and for PvE, damage is all that really matters. So this is our best choice. And now finally we have come to the gameplay. The idea behind the playstyle is to use various skills to increase your damage, mark the target, and then rotate through your burst damage and cause high explosion damage from detonation mark. Using selfless diffusion before annihilation barrage shot will extend the duration of detonation mark and allow it to explode for even higher damage. So our main rotation is to use Da Vinci's Courage, then Cruel Smite, then selfless diffusion, then mortal mark, then stunning blow, then quick fire, then wild barrage, then Ascending Slash, then Guillotine Blade, then Death Blow, and now we finally finish it off with Cruel Smite. And from here we just rinse and repeat. The main goal for this combo is to get as many buffs as possible. So then when we use Selfless Diffusion, Mother Nature's Protest, and Mortal Mark. These are also our most important skills that we want to keep up pretty much 24-7. This particular rotation is more meant for boss fights as opposed to mobs in the open world. So you don't have to rotate all your buffs. Most of your damage skills are able to kill open world mobs very easily, so mainly you want to use this rotation on stronger enemies. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe and comment. If you're interested in more content, then check out my channel and I'll see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace.